minutes this morning as I've spoken of uh, this text that was ready to hear by Brother Perry. Uh, been stated this, and I know it's ingrained in many of your hearts, but we've been hearing it basically every Lord's Day since the first Lord's Day of this year. But it comes from Proverbs chapter 3. And verse number 5 and 6 it said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lay not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. This is normally what I do for my last Lord's uh, Day lesson of the year, which this is, uh, unless something uh, drastically changes, uh, we'll be traveling next week. Uh, so I want to go ahead and get this in now. Like I say, unless something try, uh, drastically happen, uh, we'll be traveling uh, Lord's will next week. So I want to go ahead and present this now and kind of sum up and touch on it a little bit. Uh, all the God's words are important. There's no uh, wasted space in the scripture, amen? Uh, God says it. It's important. Amen. Whether we do it or believe it, doesn't matter. God says it. It's important. Amen. And there's a lot of import associated with this particular uh, text. If you want to look at Psalms, uh, excuse me, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, I'm looking at verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 3, we're getting at verse number 1. And we're all familiar, as you turn it up, Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 1. We're all familiar with the uh, profession of uh, architect. Those guys can sit down and draw out blueprints uh, that are needed and necessary for the building of most things, uh, in particular buildings. Uh, they put together what's called a blueprint. And those things, if you ever looked at one, if you haven't, just go back and take time to just put this, put this Google word blueprint uh, and just look at the detail that goes into it. Uh, the guys who I think are the architect plus who designed together uh, for us, uh, look at those blueprints and just the little sound room back there, the dimensions and everything, uh, it's, it's all laid out. And when they built it, they built it according to the blueprint. And when you build something according to the blueprint, it's going to come out as intended, if it's based upon the blueprint. Now, as one builds, they may get to a certain point and say, well, we want to change this and change that. But they also, if they're doing it right, they're going to go back and change the blueprint to reflect. And it's important as we look at Proverbs chapter 3, I believe that God, and this is one of the reasons why I chose this text at the beginning of the year, God gives us a clear blueprint in helping us to reach perfection. He gives us the direction clearly laid out in order to help us to reach perfection. And I say perfection not in the sense of being absent or minus a mistake, but being complete. Being complete. God expects us to be complete. He provides us everything we need to do in order to be complete. And if we are complete, we can only reach perfection. Everybody understand that? We are totally complete from what from God's standpoint, from this blueprint, that will lead us to actually the other meaning of perfection. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 1, it says, uh, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Sounds like some pretty good advice so far, right? It says, For length of days, notice this promise, and long life, and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And here in verse 5, which we have been hearing all year, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. 
He goes on to verse 7, he says, Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy labor and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thy increase. So shall thy bones be filled with plenty, and thy presence shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loved, he corrected as a father, the son, in whom he delighted. As I look at this text and bring this to a close for myself this year, I simply entitled this lesson, based upon this blueprint, I simply titled this lesson, Let God's Direction Bring You to Perfection. Let God's Direction Bring You to Perfection. If you want to be complete, if you want to reach perfection, allow God to direct you. In verse 5 and verse 6 in particular, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct <coughs> thy path. That is, I believe, the gist of this text. Those two verses, I believe, sums up this particular thought perfectly. To trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, not some of them, but all of your ways, acknowledge him and allow him. He shall be the one to direct our path. Jeremiah speaks about it. It's not any man that walks to direct his own path. We need direction from God. If we are going to reach that level of perfection or completeness, we have to allow God to direct our path. In Proverbs 3, verse 1, he says, My son, forget not my law. Look at this sound advice here. Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Have you done that throughout this year? Have you gotten better about doing that? Let God's commandments uh, Keep your, let your, allow your heart to keep God's commandments, uh, willing your heart to keep God's commandments. And notice the promise of He says, for well, the days of long life and peace shall they add to thee. Now, we, we don't know when, amen, we all have an appointment. We all have an appointment, we don't know when. So that's the the days, based upon who? Based upon God. What I may prefer as far as this days may not be God's preference, right? Long life. What I prefer may not be what God prefers. But I want you to notice this one, and he says, and peace. No matter how short or how long my time may be, I'm so thankful to know that I can be afforded peace throughout that entire walk. Mm -hmm. And it's not a peace that everybody can even comprehend. You see, that's a peace of God that surpasses all understanding. That means no matter what situation I may be in, no matter what I'm dealing with, I am still at peace because I know God is in control. Amen. Amen. When you like doing those little things, you go on the playground, thing, and spin around on the thing, and fall off the pump of my head, and jump back up there, and there go out, and whatever. That's how life feels like sometimes, man. Just spinning out of control. But guess who's in control? God. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, What's going on in your life? You can have a sense of peace that some people, they can't even fathom. Those outside of Christ, they can't even fathom that kind of peace. And peace does not necessarily mean an absence of conflict or war. But it's the state that you are in when going through things when you get that bad report from the doctor. And he's expecting you to just, to just do what most people do and just fall apart. When you see that bad news, when you see that disappointing life, and most people expect for you at that time to just, to just, come on, there you are. Come on, come on. That peace, that comes from God. Go so he says, let that 
part, keep my commandments for little days and all life, and peace shall they add to you. Talk about being obedient to God's word. When we are obedient to God's word, man, that's a sense of peace. Amen. I couldn't have been, you know, I know being Westerns and stuff, I couldn't have been an outlaw. I took out to be one hour with all the time. <laughs> I said, man, I'm trying to go to bed, I'm to go to bed. <laughs> I like to be able to go to bed and sleep so that I can be fresh and rewind. Amen. That's what God gives us. That kind of peace, no matter what is going on. I remind them of Jesus out there on the boat with the disciples, you know, and, and the wind becomes tumultuous and the wind blows and, and the sea starts doing their thing and stuff, and they jump up and oh, 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 Jesus. What was Jesus at? Sleep. You know, take a nap. Uh, and he get up there. Lord, I have to say it. Come on, child. Come on now. Come on, God. Why are you so fearful? That's the kind of peace I'm talking about that only God can provide and offer. Yes. And in the middle of that tumultuous storm, all he has to do is say, be still. <laughs> Bad diagnosis, something better, be still.
go around, you know. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know maybe, maybe I can handle this a little bit better than God. It's not the case. It's not the case. I don't think sitting in the back doing nothing mm -hmm. is, is beneficial. Mm -hmm. But allow God to be in control, amen? Mm -hmm. There are certain things that any situation comes up that we have some, we just something we don't have to do. Faith without, you know, to tell doing something. Faith without works, amen? But there are some things that we, God expects us to do. That comes by discernment, right? Good reason, being told by it, good judgment. There are some things I'm going to have to do here. We try, Brother Bishop. Oh, I need a job. How many places have you applied? I have. How many places have you applied? I have. How many places have you applied? I have. How many people have you talked to in that way? I have. God expects us to do it. Amen. Amen. Faith without works. It's dead. But in any given situation, there's something we ought to do. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, this is not taking the place of God. He's doing what he wants us to do, amen? Right. And not trying to end around him, amen? Yeah. Not leaving it to our own understanding. And then he says in verse 6, In all thy ways, which ways? How many of them? Oh. All of them. Acknowledge who? Him. You ever see somebody, man? Yeah, I've been God, and God will get me through, and this and that and everything, and I know he is, and I know he's able. God is able. Will he want All of those things we say. And then, after God has placed that blessing in our lap, man, let me tell you what I did. Mm -hmm. Tell you how I got through this thing. Mm -hmm. Really? There's some big barns. There's some big, bigger barns. You get all that by yourself. Mm -hmm. You grew them talks by yourself. You supplied the sun, you supplied the rain. You supplied the nutrients in the ground with the big barn. I don't know what time it's 12. You know what? You know what I'm saying? You know what God called that kind of thinking? Foolish. Call that foolish. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. That's what he says. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In your life daily, in your walk, acknowledge him. You know, in football, they coach in football. Mm -hmm. He said, it's in the ball. One big, that touchdown. This one kid y'all got, man. That dude, he, he be celebrating two, four hours for me. <laughs> he be about 50 hours, how he celebrating. Like, you know, he don't have to get across the line, but he celebrates. <laughs> we got to get across the line, amen? And then we can acknowledge. Right. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Let people know what God has done for you. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you live, your conversation, your speech, acknowledge God. Well, like this your first time, amen. You've been a Christian. Be a Christian, amen. Acknowledge him in your life. Let people see. They don't have to be blessed. Let them see God in you. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And when we do this, we're going to lay, we're going to follow the path that He lays out for us. We're going to follow the path that He lays out for us. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct that path. He goes on to say, be not wise in thine own eyes. Well, that's time to advice, yeah? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Mm -hmm. It should be held to thy neighbor and marrow to thy home. This gives us strength and encouragement. It provides us with what we need from the inside out. He says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Always putting God first. Seek ye first. Matthew 6, verse 3. The kingdom of God is righteousness. And then what does Jesus say? I'll take all this other stuff. Honor him first. You did a lot of trouble not honoring God first. You did your first for the best. Amen. Mm -hmm. You did a lot of trouble. That's, all, that's Cain. Mm. That's Cain. Mm. And then he said, wait, wait, you're not crazy now. If you do right, what? 
Except do wrong. This was not that door. This not that way. Without sin. So should our barns, watch this, be filled with plenty. Some people be so worried about the barns are empty that they miss out on the barns being filled. As long as you are giving and helping and sharing with others, your, your barn ain't going to run empty. Right. God ain't going to let it run empty. There's so many moves I made this past week with doing things with different individuals and stuff. Every time I made a move, there was something else that popped up on me and I wasn't even expecting it. I forgot about it. I was like, wow, okay. That ain't goes back. <laughs> that ain't goes back. Comes back. That's what God does in our lives. Yeah. Our bonds ain't going to go empty. Amen. Amen. He said, so shall so, so our bonds be filled with plenty. And our presence shall burst out with wine. God will open the window of heaven before you got a blessing that you would not have the room to receive. Amen. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. And there were, sometimes we, we know we don't want to we don't want that woman. We don't want that woman. And I've to say that most of us have never gotten a woman growing up. And even in this life, as an adult, that we didn't deserve. And all of them all should have been worse. I skated on a whole bunch of them when I was little. I, I could play that something thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to play something. Oh, you're right. I'm going to play something. <laughs> a lot of whoopers I deserved, but I didn't get it. But don't despise the woman of the Lord, the chastity of the Lord. Right. He says, Need to be weary of his correction. Home. He loves, he chastens, he corrects He does the Father, the Son, and only the light. These timeless words, if you will just let God's correction take over you, it will bring you to that perfection that he wants and expects from us. And let me close with this. If we just follow the directions as given to us in this little short text, uh, Proverbs 3, 1 through 12, we would just follow those. Just follow that blueprint. Mm -hmm. You would be amazed at where you will come from and to where you can get to by following God's direction towards that uh, arena of perfection, mm -hmm. having that complete life. And that complete life involves being like God. Yeah. And many will take God's word and allow it to move them. Men will take God's word and allow it to, to grow them. Men will take God's word and allow it to uh, bring them closer to life. Now, if I was to speak to different ones, some would say how much they have grown closer to the Lord this past year. Some would say otherwise. When I was speaking to some people, some will say how their faith has increased this last year. But some will say otherwise. If I was to speak to another group of individuals, some will say how they have reached a greater level of spiritual maturity this last year. And some will say otherwise. Some will say how they have overcome some significant shortfalls, some sins they started out this year dealing with. And the temptation they started out giving into, they, they don't follow them anymore. But some or others would say otherwise. What's the difference maker there? The difference maker is who have you allowed to direct your path? Whose steps have you followed in? You see, Satan. He has a path towards us well. Amen. Satan has a plan for us as well. God has a marvelous, flawless plan for us. But Satan, you know, wanted to try to go send out and be like God. He has plans. Whose path have you followed this year? Look at your own individual life and say, based upon where I started and where I am now, and be honest, whose path have I likely to follow this year? You seem like you're going backwards in those areas. Spirit out, spirit out. You seem like you're going backwards in life. Whose path?
path have you followed this year? You see, at the end of the day, First Peter uh, chapter 1, God wants us to be like him. God wants us to be like him. Who do you want to be like? I want to be like God. Who does God want to be like? He wants to be like him. Who do you want to be like? I want to be like God. Who does God want to be like? Y'all get it? God wants us to be like him. First Peter. Allow 
this direction to lead us there. The only way you can get to where you're going, you got to have something to guide you. you got to have something to show you the direction. God says, come unto me, here's how you get there. Come unto me, here's how you get there. Whosoever will, let him come, here's how you get there. God's not going to pull a bathroom and move to another place. Eh? He says, I'm here, come here, guess who's going to be there when you get there? God's going to be there. Being therefore perfect, even as your Father who is in heaven, feels perfect. And then 1 Peter 1, verse 15 and 16, as I close. 1 Peter 1, verse 15 and 16. But as he, 1 Peter 1, verse 15 and 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of life. Remember before I talked about in all your ways, acknowledge him, in all your conversation, in all your walk, acknowledge him. As he which hath called you to my God is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. How do I get there? By following his direction. He don't say, hey, y'all people at uh, work. This week over work. He said, there's a place called heaven. I want you to be why. Here's how you get there. Follow my direction. Follow my direction. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Mm -hmm. Let God's direction bring you to perfection. I pray that this last look at this text of the year, from where you started, that you can see some significant difference in yourself. Mm. In a positive way, in a good way, in a way that's going to... Uh, Cause God to smile or favor upon you. It's easy, man, to just go back and, you know, what is it, regress? Go back and take that with It's easy to do that. Less resistance involved, less effort involved. But, man, to continue to push forward, hmm. to continue to push forward against difficult circumstances and situations, against Different cultures that come in our way sometimes so fast it's like a, a, just being in front of a, a line of freight trains just coming away problems. It's difficult to move forward in that case. But guess what? If God is directing, if God has laid out the path, you know, seeing those movies when the spider man's trying to walk out into a, a mine field and stuff, they have to make a call, and they tell everybody else to do what? They make their own path. What do they tell them? Step what he step. Don't step out of that, don't step out of that footprint there. Why? Because we know that's safe. And then when you get to the next one, you step, you step there. God's path is the safe path. His steps are the safe steps. His way is the self, is the same way. Allow God to direct your path. Trust in the Lord. Lord thine heart. Not to our own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Mm -hmm. Timeless information. Timeless guidance from God. It don't stop today. This is ongoing. This is ongoing. Step into the new year with this same thought. And as God blesses you to get it around the year after that, step into the next year with that same thought. That God's directions bring you to perfection. Amen. That's the lesson this morning. I pray it's a beneficial to you. If you're not a child of God, we want you to check out the blueprint. Check out God's word. It gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness. It has the directions to give from earth to glory. Jesus himself 
sealed it with his own blood. <coughs> All right. He gave us own life. He shed his blood. He put his seal on this thing. He died on the cross of Calvary. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 days after the facts of the doctrine. He died on the cross. He's buried and he goes up again the third day. And he said, go and tell this message. The great commission, he said, go into all the world and share this message. And when one who has an honest heart, when they hear that message, they will believe it. That he did die and was buried and rose again from the grave. And because they believe that, they say, you know what, I need to have a change of mind. Particularly about sin. I can't see sin the way I saw sin before. In fact, I'm repenting of all my sins. I'm having to change my mind about them. And because I've done this, now I'm going to stand and confess that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's right. And then I will willingly go into the water grave baptism to have my sins washed away. Mm -hmm. All of them. I will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now I have the answer to the towards God. I have the same DNA as the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm a spiritual being now. No longer the servant of sin, but the servant of righteousness. My reconciliation with God, it begins, it takes place. The old man is crucified. The operation is taking place. The circumcision of the heart is taking place. My sins have been washed away. Then I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that allows me to be on the same Playing with God, a spiritual being. Yes, right. And I come up and I'm added to the body of Christ, the church of Christ, his bride, his wife. He died for her. He's coming back for her. He said, Be thy faith unto death, and I will give you crown of life. Yes, right. Save in Acts 2 47 our end the church. Jesus yes. of salvation in us, another name on heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved, Acts 4 20. Mm -hmm. Do not a child of God. Allow his direction leads you to perfection. Amen. So child of God, you follow my way side for whatever reason. Or if you just want to take this time to acknowledge him, thank him. It's opportunity to afford it, just we stand and sing this song.